dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Proudly we hail, starring Gail Storm in Where the Heart Is, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the glamorous headline names of the motion picture world join us for your entertainment in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is beautiful Gail Storm, and the title of our romance drama, Where the Heart Is. In our story, Gail portrays the bewildered aunt of a little British war orphan who has been given to her care. When she learns to see the world from the child's perspective, she finds her own life fully enriched and gives happiness to those about her. We'll have the curtain for Act One of Where the Heart Is immediately after this important message from Wendell Niles. Looking for a career as an executive in aviation? The United States Air Force is selecting a limited number of young college men and women to prepare them for important non-flying jobs as officers in administrative and technical fields. Fields such as management, communications, research and air transport. You'll get six months of training at Air Force Officer Candidate School. Learn how you can qualify. Get details at your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Where the Heart Is, starring Gail Storm as Helen Alexander. From the time Helen Alexander was a little girl, she devoted her leisure to serving others. As a consequence, she'd never had time to marry or even to become interested in any of the men who wanted to marry her. In her middle 20s, Helen found herself a reasonably successful career girl who had just about given up all thought of having a family. Then she received a cablegram from England advising her that she was the only remaining relative of her sister's daughter. Helen's sister and her husband had been killed during the Blitz, and Helen had assumed that their daughter had suffered a similar fate. Since she was still alive, Helen sent for the little girl immediately. She arrived today, and Helen and her niece, Elizabeth Westmoreland, have just entered Helen's New York apartment. Welcome to your new home, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, Miss Alexander. Why don't you call me Aunt Helen? Uh, I'd like to. It's just that... It's just... Uh, just what, dear? Well, I've known you for such a short time. I'd hate to have you think that I was too familiar. <laughs> Why, you poor, formal little darling. Call me anything you like. Here. Let me take your coat, and as soon as we've had lunch, we'll go shopping and get you a new outfit. New outfit? Mm hmm Coats, dresses, shoes, socks, everything. Wouldn't you like that? Oh, yes, but... But I don't have any clothing coupons. We don't need clothing coupons, Elizabeth. Oh, I didn't know. What would you like for lunch? Anything you have will be very nice. How about a couple of boiled eggs? Two eggs? Well, if you don't think you could eat them... Oh, I, I can't eat them. But really, Miss Alexander, you shouldn't do that. Do what, child? Trade in the black market. It isn't fair to others. Oh, why, oh, Elizabeth, why, you don't why, understand. Clothing without coupons, as many eggs as I can eat. Why, if the bobbies catch you, you'll have to pay a fine. And they'll put your picture in the paper. And none of your friends or neighbors will speak to you and... <laughs> Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am. You needn't fear that I'll be caught trading in the black market. They catch them every day. But there is no black market here. Then how can you get these things? There's no rationing here, darling. No rationing? What sort of a country is this? <laughs> Would you like a glass of milk while I'm getting your eggs ready? May I have as much of that as I want to? Of course you may. And as soon as you've finished eating, we'll go shopping for your new clothes. <laughs> Alexander, 
Yes, Elizabeth. Would you please kiss me goodnight? I'd love to. Pleasant dreams, darling. Thank you. I'm sure they will be. Milk and eggs and oranges and bananas and all those clothes without coupons. And, oh, it seems as though I've been dreaming all day. When you awaken in the morning, you'll find it's all very real. Good night, dear. Good night, Aunt Helen. <laughs> Why, Elizabeth, what's wrong? What are you crying about? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just thinking about my friends back in the home. I wish that they could have had some of the things I had today. And I wish that... Oh, Aunt Helen, I miss them so. Of course you do, darling. You're lonesome and homesick. But you'll get over it. No, I won't. In the morning, we're going to enroll you in a school where you'll meet new friends. They'll help you forget your homesickness. I wonder if my new schoolmates will like me. Of course they will, darling. Why, before school's over tomorrow, you'll be thinking of them as old friends. Oh, they were hateful, Aunt Helen. They taunted me about everything I said, the way I talked. Oh, I'm sure they didn't mean anything by it, Elizabeth. Then why did they follow me around and make sport of me? Because they're children and thoughtless. The children in the home weren't like that. When a new child arrived, we all tried to be very gentle and loving. Well, you had a great common bond in the home, dear. I wish I'd never left it. Elizabeth. Oh, oh, I am sorry, Aunt Helen. I didn't really mean that. I'm sure you didn't, darling. I, I just don't want to go back to that school, ever. Oh, I'm afraid you must. Why? They don't like me. Oh, it isn't that, dear. They just don't understand you. But that won't last long. After all, you do have what we call an English accent. And it, it does sound strange to American ears. Even to... Yours? Even to mine. But it'll be forgotten in a few days, and the children will stop teasing you. Now, run along and wash the tear stains off your face, and we'll have lunch. This afternoon, we'll go back to school, and you can start all over again. Hello, Lizzie. Go away. Huh? Oh, please go away before those horrid boys see you and come over here. They won't come while I'm here. Why not? I'm Sandy Edwards. Oh? They don't like me much. I licked them. All at once? Well, not all. Just a few at a time. Oh, my. What's your full name? Elizabeth Westmoreland. Say that again, will you? Elizabeth Westmoreland. You just come here from Boston? No, from England. Oh, I figured you were a foreigner of some kind. What did your dad do? He's up in the sky. Gosh, an aviator? Do you think you could get him to take me up? He's dead. Oh. My mom's dead. So is mine. They were both killed in the war. Gee, that's tough. I didn't ever know them, really. But I wish I had. They look awfully nice in their pictures. So does my mom. I'm sure she does. Who takes care of you? My aunt. My dad takes care of me. Of course, I'm ten. I could take care of myself. I'm sure you could. You are? You want to see me stand on my head? If you like. Okay. Of course, I lean my back against a tree. Just a little. The boys at the home didn't. Yeah? Where's the home? In England. I lived there before my aunt brought me here. What kind of place is it? A home for war orphans. It's very nice, really, if you don't have any people of your own. I don't think I'd like it. Oh, I'm sure you would. Everyone was very kind. Why, why sometimes the headmistress even kissed me goodnight. I know I wouldn't like that. Why? I don't like being kissed, especially by women. Well, I do. That's different. You're a girl. I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. You gonna hide here all night? No, just until those boys move on. Well, I'll move them for you. Oh, you couldn't. Uh, could you? You just watch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, do be careful. They'll run if I say boo. Does your eye hurt badly, Sandy? No, not much. Whatever happened? I must have forgot to say boo. Oh, I was afraid there were too many of them. That wasn't it. I think they hit me when I wasn't looking. In the eye? You going home now? I suppose I might as well. Sure. Well, see you tomorrow. What will your father say about your eye? Nothing. Really? No. That's why I think going home's the best part of the day. No matter what happens at school, Dad can make me forget it. It must be very comforting. Doesn't your aunt do that for you? I don't really know. You see, I've only known my aunt since yesterday. Gosh. We don't seem to understand each other very well. When the boys teased me this morning, Aunt Helen thought it was all nonsense. She said I was just being too sensitive. It makes it awfully lonely. Yeah. Dad says everybody has to have somebody they can depend on. When you can't even depend on your own aunt. You're coming home with me. But, oh, I really should get permission from my aunt. She's apt to worry. Nah. If she's as mean as you tell me, she won't even know you're gone. What can I do for you, lady? This is the Bureau of Missing Persons, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Who's missing? Your husband? My niece. Oh? How long has she been gone? Well, she didn't come home from school this afternoon. Well, that's only three or four hours, lady. She's probably playing with some friends. No, I checked at the school, and she, she doesn't have any friends. Oh. Well, that is, she just arrived here from England, and she and her schoolmates didn't get along at all. I see. They made fun of her English accent, and... Mm. Well, I wasn't as sympathetic as I should have been, and mm -hmm. if anything should happen to her, I'd never forgive myself. We pause briefly from our story, Where the Heart Is, starring Gail Storm, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and the United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, and volunteer your services. If you know one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. The curtain rises on Act Two of Where the Heart Is, starring Gail Storm as Helen Alexander. When Helen's English niece, Elizabeth Westmoreland, failed to return home after school, Helen was panic-stricken. She rushed to the school, but Elizabeth wasn't there, and neither the teachers nor the other children could give Helen any clue as to where she might have gone. Blaming herself for the child's disappearance, Helen hurried to the Bureau of Missing Persons and reported Elizabeth missing. And while Helen was leaving no stone unturned to find her, Elizabeth was calmly visiting the home of Sandy Edwards. Oh, I didn't know we had company. This is Elizabeth Westmoreland. Well, how do you do, Miss Westmoreland? How do you do, Mr. Edwards? Elizabeth just came here from England yesterday, Dad. She's going to live with us. She's going to live with us? What does your family think of the idea, Elizabeth? Or didn't it seem important enough to mention? Oh, I just have an aunt, Mr. Edwards. And she gave you permission to come and live with us? Well, I told Elizabeth you'd handle her aunt if she gave us any trouble. I see. Perhaps we'd better have a drink while we think this over. Would you care for some milk, Miss Westmoreland? Oh, thank you, Mr. Edwards. What about you, Sandy? Sure, Dad. I'll get it. Hey, never mind. I feel the need of a little milk myself. Isn't he swell, Elizabeth? Oh, wonderful, Sandy. I do hope he likes me. He likes anybody I like. 
Did you have any boyfriends at the home in England? Oh, yes. Dozens of them. Dozens? Certainly. And dozens of girlfriends, too. Girlfriends don't count. But in this country, you can only have one boyfriend, at a time, that is. Really? Absolutely. And if you want to be my girlfriend, then I got to be your only boyfriend. Oh, you are my only boyfriend, Sandy. Okay, then. You can be my girlfriend. <clears throat> Am I uh, interrupting something? Uh-uh. Elizabeth and I were just getting a, getting something straightened out. I see. Here's your milk, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, Mr. Edwards. And Sandy? Thanks, Dad. Where's yours? Well, I was so thirsty, I had mine out in the kitchen. Oh. Now, suppose we sit down and discuss this little matter of Elizabeth's uh, living with us. Oh, I showed her where her room would be. Oh, I think it's lovely, Mr. Edwards. Well, uh, before we go into that, tell me a little about this sudden decision to leave your aunt. Was she mean to you? Oh, no, Mr. Edwards. Aunt Helen's very kind. I don't think she is, Dad. The police, Sandy. If your aunt is kind, Elizabeth, why don't you like her? I do like her, Mr. Edwards. Uh, I love her. Still, you'd rather not live with her. It was my idea, Dad. I figured that out, son. See, Elizabeth, how smart he is? Well, uh, there must have been some reason for your accepting Sandy's idea, Elizabeth. Do you mind telling me what it was? Well, my aunt and I just don't seem to understand each other, Mr. Edwards. I believe Sandy said that you just arrived here from England. Just yesterday. Well, of course, it's up to you, but I really think you should give your aunt a little more time before walking out on her and leaving her all alone. Oh, uh, I hadn't thought of that. Her being all alone. And it's getting late. She must be worried sick about your not having come home from school. Oh, well... Uh, perhaps I'd better go home and see. If she isn't worried, you can come right back. Why don't we all walk over together? Oh, I'd like that. Good. Maybe if I have a chance to talk with your aunt, we can work out some sort of a land-lease deal. Yes? Elizabeth, where have you been? Over at Sandy's. Where? Perhaps I can explain. I'm Dan Edwards, Sandy's father, Mrs... Miss Alexander. Won't you come in? Thank you. When I came home from work, I found Elizabeth and Sandy waiting for me. I was so worried. I can imagine. But this is Sandy, Aunt Helen. He fought the boys who were teasing me. Oh? Uh, how do you do, Sandy? Oh, he's going to let me be his girlfriend. <clears throat> I, um, uh, I wonder if I could speak to you alone, Miss Alexander. Why, of course. Uh, why don't you show Sandy your playroom, Elizabeth? All right. Gee, you have a playroom? Yes. Come on, Sandy. Okay. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Edwards? Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I hardly know how to say this, Miss Alexander, but, well, I've had the same problem you're facing, and I thought that possibly you might benefit from my experience. Well, thank you, Mr. Edwards. Now, if you'll just, uh, tell me what problem it is that I'm facing, I'll be even more grateful. Oh. Well, Elizabeth wanted to come and live with us. What? Why, that's ridiculous. Well, not to a child, Miss Alexander particularly an unhappy child. Why should Elizabeth be unhappy? Because you let her down today. Really, Mr. Edwards? I didn't mean to be so blunt. But from what Elizabeth told me, the greatest blow she suffered today was your admitting that her accent sounded strange even to your ears. Well, it does. Yes, it is. of course it does. But when you told her so, you took away the only prop she had to lean on. You. Well... But surely she should be able to understand At that... eight? Uh, when you can't understand her? I suppose you're a child psychologist? I happen to be a plumbing salesman who loves kids enough to try to see things through their eyes. And, of course, you're very successful. My boy doesn't want to run away from me. And he apparently had no difficulty convincing Elizabeth that she should come and live with us. I think you've said enough, Mr. Edwards. I'm sorry I presume to advise you, Miss Alexander. I won't do it again. Now, if you'll find Sandy for me, we'll be on our way. Good evening, Mr. Edwards. Well, good evening, Miss Alexander. May I come in? Of course. 
I hardly expected to see you again after last night. That's why I'm here. I'm terribly sorry that I was so rude. You weren't. You were quite right. Would you care for a drink? No, thank you. I'll just stay a minute. I was resentful last night only because Because I... I came to your house a perfect stranger and offered unsolicited advice. I'm very glad you did. As I started to say, I was resentful only because I'd been terribly worried and was blaming myself for all the dreadful things which I imagined might have happened to Elizabeth. When you confirmed my opinion of myself, I turned my resentment against you. I don't blame you a bit. How is Elizabeth today? Sandy hasn't come home yet, so I haven't had a report. She's in much better spirits. In fact, she and Sandy are at my place now. They love the new playroom, and I was hoping that Sandy could stay for dinner. Oh, of course he can. I thought uh, that perhaps you'd come, too. Then after dinner, you could give me some more advice. Oh, that was a wonderful dinner, Helen. Better than last night? Much, and the night before. And the night before that, and... Good Lord. How many nights have Sandy and I had dinner here? <laughs> Twenty... I really haven't counted them, Dan. Well, it's been wonderful while it lasted. While it lasted? We can't impose on you forever, Helen. Well, it's no imposition, Dan. Sandy's been wonderful in helping Elizabeth adjust herself, and you... Yes? You've been a great help to me. I see. You've done wonders for Elizabeth, too. Nothing that you couldn't do. Oh, yes, you have. You've... Well, you've taught her to understand what it is to have a father, and... Well, you've done the same for Sandy. Oh, what? Well, I mean, you've been more like a mother to him than, than any woman he's ever known. How old was Sandy when your wife passed away, Dan? Less than a week. And you never remarried? No. Why? Oh, I guess I didn't want the responsibility for picking Sandy's stepmother. Oh, I figured that when he was old enough to know what he wanted, I'd let him pick his own. I see. When do you think he'll be old enough, Dan? He's old enough now. Why haven't you ever married, Helen? No one ever asked me. Oh, surely you don't expect me to believe that. <laughs> it's true. At least the right ones never asked me. Oh, well, that's more like it. Have you any idea what the um, right one would be like? Oh, yes. Oh, that is, um, he'd be not too short and not too tall. About average height? Yes. Does he have to have a lot of money? Oh, no. No, I'd, I'd want to take care of the house for him. About average circumstances? Mm-hmm. How old should he be? Well... About average? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty average man. I'm surprised one of them hasn't grabbed you long before this. Oh, because he isn't average, really. He's far above average in patience and kindness and understanding. Oh. Well, there aren't many who can fill that bell. I don't want many. Just one. Well, I sincerely hope you find him, Helen. You'll make him happy. You'd make any man happy. Well, I'd better collect Sandy and run along. So early? Yeah, it's way past Sandy's bedtime. I'm going to break the news to him. He'll be pretty disappointed and upset, so... Well, what about? Well, Sandy picked you for his new mother, and... He did? He told me so on the way over tonight. I was going to ask you. Well, why haven't you? Because I know that I couldn't come up to the standard you've set. I'm a long ways from being far above average in patience and understanding and... Not to me. Helen, do you really think that... That is... Could you... Would you... Of course I would, Dan. You don't think I'd let anything disappoint Sandy, do you? The curtain falls in the final act to where the heart is. Our star, Gail Storm, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health 
of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now back at the microphone, our star, Gail Storm. Gail, I welcome you to Proudly We Hail and congratulate you on your recent contract with Universal International. Thank you, C.P., and I might add I'm very happy with it. You should be with a seven-year contract. And a Technicolor picture to launch my debut. It's called Curtain Call at Cactus Creek with Donald O'Connor, Vincent Price, Eve Arden, and Walter Brennan. Isn't that a satire on Western pictures? I think it boils down to that. When we were just finishing, some of us were figuring out how we would exploit it. And uh, what were your conclusions? Well, we decided it could be called a Technicolor Western musical comedy drama satire (laughs) and even a fantasy, I guess. Especially that part where Donald dreams he's a Western hero. It sounds very interesting, and I'll be sure to catch it. Now tell me... What's your personal schedule these days? Well, there's not much spare time, C.P., but I am doing some concert vocal study with Dr. Theodore Gonsoff. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, You have a lovely voice. Thank you. Well, uh, we know you as a very sweet and wonderful wife and mother of three fine boys and a beautiful motion picture star. I understand you find time to work for your church. Yes, that's the Hollywood Beverly Christian Church. We think it's pretty fine. It just goes to show when Sunday comes, we here in Hollywood, just like everyone else over the country, go to church. You know Dr. Lewis Evans? Oh, certainly. He's the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood. That's right. He invited me to his church last Sunday, and I had a pass for a reserved seat. At 20 minutes to 11, there were 2,000 people waiting outside, and I couldn't get in even with a pass. (laughs) C.P., you come to our church next Sunday. I think I can use my influence and get you in. Okay, you've got yourself a new member. I'll be looking for you. Now tell me, who's your star next week? Next week, Gail, and ladies and gentlemen, Bill Williams stars with us in Time Out, a bang-up action story of a prize-fight champion whose ambition courage and skill takes him to the top of his profession and the fight for the world's championship. Our story opens at the battle for the championship crown, and there's a reserve seat at ringside for everyone for the battle of the century. Fine, I'll be listening. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Gail. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Bill Williams steps into the squared circle for time out. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Gail Storm appears for the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script is by Bill Hampton, the music by Eddie Dunstan. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.